welcome to a, another commentary done by Diggity. This is BSL Hasu League round of 32 group H properly annotated. Big shout out to Arcane Winds, current Chatland champion. Look forward to the Chatland follow-up, by the way, coming up this summer. I don't have the exact date on top, off the top of my head, but it is got a massive prize pool and that's attracting a lot of top line players and should be a good one. Arthos is honestly has a good shot of winning it. And if nothing else, it's exciting to see him in competition. <clears throat> Glaive, upper right in corner, orange turn, bottom right in corner, we got Ball once again as the blue Protoss. This is going to be on Citadel, which is a massive map. It is huge, which it's kind of interesting because not only is it large, it's large. It has two bases that are easily accessible and then kind of a vulnerable third either direction. So you've got the third with the, that vertical ramp, which can be kind of punished. The other aspect of it is, is off initial play because of the odd ramps that it has. There's vision problems. Uh, back and forth and wondering if that just the way the vision especially at uh at these kind of horizontal is that the word i'm looking for horizontal rather than vertical uh exits so this for whatever reason because it may be just a little bit surface area and things but there can be good vision abuse back and forth so you don't have the high ground advantage but you have a vision advantage which almost encourages getting stuff into your opponent's natural expansion to try to abuse that <clears throat> so we'll see if that plays that direction either way. Ball looks like he's maybe planning on being more defensive. He's got that gateway towards the rear of his base, dropping an assimilator as well. We also have an interior barracks. So maybe a factory opener for Glaive, opposite side. It's interesting because because of that getting cruft in your natural expansion for your opponent is beneficial. You'd think that, oh yeah, it's, it's an automatic winner going for aggressive early one base or two base plays, but at the same time, because the map's so large, I'm wondering if it ends up being more detrimental. I like the concepts of the these ASL maps. I gotta say, it's quick cybernetic score uh, before Zealot. We're gonna see a defensive Zealot to maybe blockade the ramp. Looks like not before the additional pylon being dropped here from Ball. In the meantime, Glaive scouting upper left-hand corner. Ball going to head and sneak out with his initial probe. Unfortunately, he's going to the bottom left. Never mind, he's gonna go maybe mid-map. It's hard to tell with the scouting pattern. By the way, they added the BSL. You can see the SL on the edge of that map space. Kind of in lieu of the similar thing with ASL potentially. Factory being dropped, and we have just a single SCV on gas. So we're gonna see an old school one factory into expand here from Glaive from interior to the base. Are we gonna see, and we are, we got the second Marine. We'll see if it's three and then a push out behind it. Glaive scouting from top left to bottom right now. Which I kind of like that scouting pattern for Terran if you're opting to play a little bit more defensively because it's like, okay, worst, best case scenario, they're at cross bond position. So look for the worst case scenario first. In the meantime, the probe just hanging out near that natural to go ahead and confirm things. Seize the range. First Dragoon going to pop out, but Glaive got the information he was looking for and Ball able to pull that probe out just in the nick of time to see the three marines on the front we are seeing a machine shop drop rather than an initial vulture <clears throat> and i wonder if we're going to see siege tech and then a floated barracks from there so we got we uh we have a go ahead and drop of the command center behind this and a quick natural expansion to follow it up the scv is pocketed here bottom left so glaive can get that additional information but both players i think respecting the size of this map and opting to play a little bit more economically defense uh, defensively, Dragoon making its way forward. Should arrive close to range being finished. That does open up this SCV to sneak the way around. Glaive showing some skill here, knowing that timing. The probe is going to see him as he's making its way across, but he's not going to be anywhere near in time to block at least information in the natural expansion. And honestly, it feels kind of silly having the Dragoon hold the ramp. One, because he wasn't in a block position, but also secondarily... Well, that was a bit revealed there, but usually that second, that natural expansion shown ball just showing him everything here showing the second gate showing range finishing going to show him the robotics so now he knows that it was expansion to two gate robo and let's see if glaive responds accordingly he's getting that engineering bay up to potentially contend <clears throat> contend with reavers we have four marines actually in the bunker which no additional marine being built but that does mean their options to be aggressive sometimes Siege tank doing a little bit of damage to that Dragoon to go ahead and force it back. The single Dragoon, not much of a threat. Natural expansion being saturated. I believe, yeah, that SAV killed in the main. So two gate Robo now 
established. Now let's see if we see Observatory first, which would suggest we're going to go for more three base play if we're going to see the support bay first for more of a harass style. Looks like it is going to be Observatory first, so Ball wanting to play this more economically aggressive. Engineering base starting to float out. And we've got just siege tanks being built here. I think this is going to be a setup for a more defensive 2-1 play off a single base. And there's the quick third from Ball. Keep in mind, this is not a gas expansion. It's just a mineral expansion, which part of the part of that is it means Protoss has to play a little bit lower tech. And it also means for Terran, you get kind of the benefit of you don't have to worry about some of the higher gas tech units down the line with that base grab. So second factory now getting dropped. We've got a number of siege tanks out on the front. I believe we have a turret underneath this engineering bay. I can't select it, however. Armory being built to go ahead and make the way towards plus one weapons, but no other, uh, surprisingly, no other turret defense, just the siege tanks remaining on siege to engage should there be a, uh, should have there been a robotics aggression, support bay, etc. Third gateway dropping. So both players playing very, very macro oriented. <clears throat> I think Ball gonna end up in a pretty good position out of the end of it. Siege tech just now being researched, by the way. This is almost uh, Mihu style in the space of it. And Ball gonna get maybe really greedy and go for a fourth, which I'm a little bit shocked. He doesn't necessarily have the information to pull that. He's just presuming that it is more of a defensive play. Two additional Dragoons making the way across. And actually he could probably get away with it with just the two factories down. We'll see. He's already saturating that third base in a good position here. We got four gateways being constructed. Keep in mind this is without any robotic support. So the observatory sees the double factory. They're going to see the Goliaths produced. Comsat being constructed as well, but Ball now knows the factory count, which suggests it is, again, more of a 2-1 play. It's possible that it would be a plus one weapons 11 minute timing, but usually with that you have more factories being built right about now. So never mind, maybe. This is also potentially just going to be four factory to kind of play it both directions. Compsat catches the observer. Nice play. Wipes it out, but the four factories have been spotted. I think it's better to get that observer before the four factories are getting dropped, because it's rare that a Terran's going to do that and then forget the factory. Six o'clock base is being built. Pylon wall to protect against potential vulture runbys. And that second machine shop being dropped. So I'll be interested to see whether we see a second armory in the midst of this, we'll have to... A Terran starport is being dropped, which suggests we are, in fact, going to see that second army more for a 2-1 play rather than the one uh, plus one weapons move out. And so probably that and with some vultures moving out in the map to try to mitigate something else. And is Ball going to get even greedier and go for five and then try to play Gateway Man? We'll have to see. He's already got six gateways in place. <clears throat> already dropping a seven. So getting pretty heavy on the gateway count here to start. Uh, hasn't had a surge where he wants to be as far as the numbers. And we do have a third command center being built here from Ball off the four factories. So let's see if he's going to do a slow move and go for 3-2 instead onto the close mineral patch. He still has the option to shift things out as far as which base he wants to take. There's the second armory getting dropped. Engineering bay floating just in case through movement, but Ball playing it very light defensively. Very, very light. And yeah, he's got a lot of, he's got 51 probes saturating already. He's established massive gateway lines in the midst of this, just recognizing that it was gonna be a slower play. So he's gonna have a big economic surge in the midst of this, as long as he stays on top of macro, which I believe he's going to. Does have the Citadel of a Dune behind here to get that Zelt leg speed. So he just wants to play gateway man and try to run over Glaive in a straight up macro war. We do have a control tower do uh, drop, so there is an opportunity for vulture drops in the midst of this. More often, off four factories though, it's kind of a vulture siege tank mix. And with the Goliath count, that's to mitigate potential dropships. Fifth factory now coming in play, but yeah, this is all indicating a move to go ahead and either grab that mineral only, possibly a float to the 12 o'clock, but I presume towards the mineral only because you do have that command center at that forward position. This pylon would see dropships if they're making the way across. Flurry of Comsats to scout things. Photon Cannon, by the way, at the six o'clock location, just in case vultures 
started making their way and we have a six factory getting dropped before that command center is in place. So Glaive wanting to play it a little bit heavier as far as the support, presuming he's going to be able to get this command center out in the field, but he's got a distance to cover on Citadel to get towards this mineral only. And if Ball's on top of it, he might be able to actually spot the command center, push out and maybe pick it off pretty rapidly. It looks okay. Glaive holding it short and being very, very cautious. So not killing that observer first before the army is positioned forward, kind of hiding his army in this back wing to give Ball as little information as possible, which is fantastic. Let's see if he moves that barracks forward to provide some scouting. You can see Ball was anticipating some vultures mid-map at this stage, so he's got the bulk of his army actually in the center position. So I think he misread this potentially as far as what was going to... Uh, slightly. It's not like in a de detrimental way. He's still got a decent build against this. He's got a massive supply lead all of a sudden at 40 supply, which is going to make it even harder for Glaive to establish this third base. And let's see if Glaive, is he just going to wait for 2-1 before he does this is the next question. Okay, now starting to putter forward. Usually when you have the seventh factory coming online, that means you want to have that economy behind it. So the Dragoons right there on the high ground, they're going to get some free shots on the Vultures. This is not a sufficient enough attack force to do much. That shuttle's basically empty. So these Dragoons going to get wiped out. An easy cleanup for Glaive. Nice sweeping motion also to trap all of those units in and wipe them out. And now he's got, first of all, a bulk threat, and he's going to be able to drop that command center behind it. But Ball might think, oh, I need to crash down on this immediately. Glaive actually stepping a little bit too far forward. It looks like he was thinking about going for an attack, but he needs this army to defend that third base. And he just got completely swarmed on all ends. Yeah, step too far forward, didn't set back and siege, so his army gets completely reset. And now he's in a, yeah, just has to immediately lift off and back up. That's kind of the problem with this mineral only base is you really need to defend it heavily and rely on these high ground positions to defend it on whatever race you're engaging with because there's it's very exposed shuttle looking for some bombs maybe one zealot manages to sneak out looks like it wanted to engage that mine rather than the siege tanks and ball smelling a little blood in the water getting a little bit too eager and donates his army into the natural expansion but he's still going to come ahead in that because he's going to be able to rebuild very, very rapidly off the sizable gateway count he has. Again, as long as he hits the macro cycles, it looks like one gateway, uh, one gateway silent here and some of them a little bit over queued. But Glaive now using the opportunity to go out and sneak out with those vultures. We do have a cannon already up here bottom left. So that's going to put Ball at a lot of bases. He might want to cap those gases to cycle in some more high Templar some things of those lines. Right now, he is playing it uh, Gateway Man Pure, though. Just Dragoon, just Zealot. I think he's going to be able to pull it off, honestly, if he can just keep Glaive down to two bases and keep continuously resetting that count. We are now up to eight factories in the back line. 20 supply lead for Ball. A Zealot wandering up just to go ahead and check the scenario. You can see how deep it got with the lack of siege tanks. Mostly Vultures here out on the front, and now Glaive starting to secure that forward position a little bit better before he's going to float out and try to grab that third once again. Yeah, a little bit, very, very cautious this time, potentially a little bit overly cautious. This is allowing Ball to go ahead and establish additional gateways here, bottom left, so he can sneak out should he need to. And he's also already established a defensive force near that natural expansion here, bottom left. Glay finally gra grabbing that third, but it feels like this is very, very late in comparison. Especially because we got, yeah, still a lot of saturated bases across the map. Ball repositioning his troops mid-map. Single Observer sees the mines to the north. I'm not sure. He's got to presume that Glaive is bunkering up. And I want to get a look at the siege tank count here. So we got maybe 10 siege tanks. Very anemic for this stage of the game couple mines at least potentially denying the three o'clock but ball already in a really good late game position although might want to be at the 70 worker count right now he's just sitting around the 60 that might change as he grabs this additional nexus here bottom left <clears throat> dragoon's just kind of funneling around looking to clear mines mid-map and also looking to see if there was ever a move out from ball also catch those vultures should they start wandering out in the field usually that's what you see at this stage glaive I think a little bit spooked 
after that third got hit and trying to preserve what units he can. So mine's being cleared out. Thief ball, yeah. Uh, checking the corner, gets an initial hit. Might want to back up from here so he doesn't donate troops. A zealot also just, you're just sending in a zealot to go ahead and clear mines. It's actually pretty effective. Lave a little bit late to respond, so I think he ended up losing a considerable amount right there. Ball also responding to the a potential vulture incursion, dropping another photon cannon there at his natural expansion. So both players setting up for a longer macro game. Plus two weapons, plus one finish. That's usually a move out timing for Terran, but and he's actually got a macro lead on top of this, which is a bit of a, a shock. So Ball fumbling on the macro side a little bit and Glaive really picking it up, really hunkering down and focusing. So he's got 200 supply before Ball does. And really, if you're gonna play Gateway Man and have it be successful, you need to crash and reset that army over and over and over again and just resupply a lot more rapidly. He does already have the evacuation points here bottom left, a couple workers being transferred bottom left. Looks like they're gonna be able to get in there free, but Glaive has established a large portion of the map that he's starting to move into through uh, the mine placement and Ball's armies are somewhat scattered right this second. And I don't know that they're in the best position to engage Glaive, who's now starting to make his way along that right-hand side. Curious what the upgrades look like, just plus one weapons. So initial engagements here along that right-hand corridor, a lot of vultures leading, the observers getting caught out as well. Unfortunately for Glaive, he's running into the bulk of Ball's army. You have the Dragoons trying to clear the rear so they can engage from the right, but we have another fraction of an army making their way from that backhand side. Shuttle able to get in and get some A-Zealot down, but some nice vulture defense here on the low ground, covering these siege tanks. Unfortunately, Ball doing a great job of swarming from all angles. I still think Glaive's going to end up in an okay position. Defensive Matrix out on the front. We have just a few Dragoons left. And yeah, Ball just getting absolutely smashed, so might end up losing this exposed third, depending on reinforcements. The Vultures need to get here in a hurry, though, to cover the siege tank lines. Actually, it looks like still four Vultures. Interestingly enough, Ball's response to this expand two more times across the left-hand side of the map. So potentially lose a difficult to defend base at the interior three o'clock, and then just resupply out of a massive amount of gateways and it looks like starports also, or sorry, stargates drop here in the bottom left. There's the fleet beacon. So Ball trying to calculate and say, you know what? I think you're gonna be way too slow. Even if you wipe out everything bottom right, I've got so much that's coming up on the left-hand side of the map and you're gonna move way too slow to stop my carrier transition. Zealots grouping up, unfortunately one not leading. So a good mine splatter there. Another army starting to move out. Great timing from Ball. Unfortunately, he just doesn't have enough bulk, so they clash down at the same time, but this was a too many siege tanks mid-map. They really needed a shuttle or something else to press across, but that does give Glaive something to think about. And right this second, it looks like he's just trying to establish position across the corner. In the meantime, Ball just trying to buy himself time as the initial three carriers being constructed. I'm going to be honest, I'm not sure I like this map for carriers, just because of the massive mid-map position. And it's just so large. One... It's, I feel like carriers really like smaller maps where you can get to your t the turn opponent space and back to defend your base fairly easily over large uh, doodads and ridges and ridge lines and whatnot where you don't have to worry about Goliaths engaging. Glaive now going to discover that their base is top left as well. The Vultures going to harass ooh, some Zealots here bottom left and soften up that attack force bottom left. But Glaive does need to hurry. Supplies about even, which with level three weapon and level two armor means his armies will outpace, but Citadel being such a large map needs to move quickly. The carriers are starting to make their way. And I'm not sure if he's commsatted. There's a lot of territory to try to commsat, to try to discover that nice mind drag to the right. So you can see Ball actually just sitting back right this second saying, okay, you gotta come to me. And Glaive starting to split off attack forces. It looks like the reinforcements rather than going to bottom right, they're just going to try to box the troops in, move towards bottom left, and start carving out top left. So now the question is, is who will be faster? Ball with the carrier production here at bottom left, or will Glaive be able to wipe out these bases before the carriers hit critical mass? Secondarily, are the Goliath counts going to be in sufficient numbers to deal with this? Another defense matrix. Ball being very, very passive. And I'm wondering if Glaive 
has gotten wise to this, has realized, you know what? You're not attacking into me. You don't look all that panicked about this, so I need to hurry. So starting to wipe out that base top left, his three siege tanks here bottom left, is starting to carve in. This bottom left-hand corner is really the soft spot in the midst of this. Siege tanks are making their way that direction. Some more units trying to carve out bottom right. In the meantime, Glaive has taken the 12 o'clock location. Zealot's clearing out the minefields to maybe open up some opportunities. The Dragoons holding back bottom left. There's three Siege Shanks. The Siege Shanks... Or sorry, uh, you got the Dragoons and the three cannons down here. The Siege Shanks now in position. Now Ball starting to move forward. Not revealing the carriers as of yet. Once you get to that six count, that's when it starts getting scary. It looks like that is a sufficient attack force with plus two weapons to go ahead and sneak into this. So going to clear out the siege tanks here, bottom left. Glaive now starting to reinforce. He still has not taken out this Nexus top left. Is dropping a turret, which suggests he wants to move into that territory once it's cleared. Nine o'clock is up. Not a lot of workers there. However, ball down on the worker count right this second. But carriers do in fact scale, and he's about to hit that magical number of six. With interceptors in tow. One problem for Protoss... Going carriers is oftentimes having sufficient minerals to keep the interceptors in place once sufficient Goliaths are out in the field. But right now, there's going to be a large window. Let's see if there's an emergency Dark Templar here built. There's a large window here for Ball where there's not a lot of air defense. And so he's going to catch Glaive with his pants down. And if he makes a beeline to that 12 o'clock base, it looks like the carrier is making their way that direction now and wipes that out. All of a sudden, Glaive is going to have a standing army but his his natural expansion is mined out. His main is mined out. He's got that third that's a mineral only. And that will be all he'll have to his name should that 12 o'clock base get picked off. Carriers reveal themselves at the 12 o'clock. Is he even going to bother defending here at the, at the... Or sorry, at the upper left. Is he even going to bother defending it? Or is he just going to move to that 12 o'clock base? It looks like instead the carrier is going to go ahead and clean the siege tanks up. If they pivot here to the 12 o'clock, that could be a challenging maneuver both directions that is six carriers more it looks like at least three more are going to spawn before glaive's able to continue the push here bottom left this is a lot of territory that ball is sacrificing though starting to move up to that 12 o'clock base and now it becomes a matter of survival for glaive is getting it done with the units he has on the ground he's the supply is wildly in the opposite direction glaive now all of a sudden moving forward in a hurry not bothering to even siege to take out the base here bottom left ball and countering it piecemeal with the troops at 12 o'clock base trying to group repair but it gets wiped out the goliath now in place and now it's going to be distance mining for glaive outside of just this mineral only which is going to be a challenge as you got 190 supply on ball side of the map siege tanks now grouping in bottom left the carriers making the way from top left to try to mitigate the losses now keep in mind glaive every unit he loses is massive right this second because he's no longer mining on a lot of bases and Ball is happy to go ahead and wipe this attack force out with some losses and just retake the bottom left hand natural expansion. He's also starting to move out and clean out the siege tanks that were left as part of that siege. And if that wasn't bad news for the units here, here come the additional units. We do have Goliaths here that have plus three weapons. I, on the interceptors, there's plus two. No armor upgrades as of yet. A big EMP on a good number of those carriers. I don't think the Goliath count is sufficient, but they were man they were able to wipe out two carriers right there in a stranded position. And that six o'clock base still under siege. It looks like Ball realizing he needs to get these carriers into a defensive slot. This is another one. Oh man, huge losses now. Massive losses. And again, this is why I don't like carriers on this map. This wasn't a, honestly what would be a threatening amount of Goliaths. That was just 12 Goliaths versus what was that eight carriers usually that's a winning situation for the carriers if they can macro and have some support but now fortunes have completely reversed command center has been floated from was it the main floated from the main out to the 12 o'clock going to land it's going to give glaive some more resources to work with ball's got some time now where it's going to be a while before he can reproduce he needs to also get the he's got some idle probes here that needs to resaturate at various locations he's now running into economic problems the Goliaths backing up bottom right to provide some support with those siege tanks, boxing the rest of that in. We have some engagements towards that third. Dragoon's going to get cleaned up right there with some mines. Just attack forces walking across from Ball to maybe try to interrupt the, what's honestly a measly... Not a lot of minerals right there. The Dragoon's pressing forward, and it looks like Glaive is going to be able 
to punch in here to the bottom left, which is going to expose all the Stargate production. Glaive, however, or sorry, Ball still at two healthy bases where Glaive is down to an anemic base and one base otherwise, but that's still, once this base gets cleaned up bottom left, going to be one base production versus two, theoretically, which puts Glaive in an okay position where you can keep producing. The Carrier is doing a good job of ma uh, microing back and forth in the midst of this. The Siege Tank's clearing out what's underneath, and it looks like this is going to be another handful of dead Carriers here. The Goliaths, well, maybe not. The Goliaths have thinned quite a bit. They've gotten picked off. Oops, that's not the map I wanted to remove. So the Carrier is trying to he defend here, but Glaive doing a good job of pressing all the way in. Pretty soon this army bottom left is going to get opened up, and right now it is kind of a... A troubling trade scenario both directions where both players need to both commit troops to try to hurt each other's economy but at the same time need to not overcommit to run out or to have the well run dry so top left mining for ball nine o'clock mining he's got not the best saturation he's got a bunch of idle probes elsewhere on the map six o'clock base hasn't been re-grabbed the carrier we got two carriers but a bunch of mines some turrets in between and maybe some reinforcements we'll see head of that direction Zoom out a little bit. Feels weird to be zoomed in at 6 o'clock after being zoomed out for such a long period of time. Uh, Dark Templar emergency maneuver here from Ball at this stage, making its way to the 12 o'clock. We don't have any on-site detection. Another command center being built to maybe grab some additional territory. Some mines being dropped outside, so he might not even bother with a... Never mind, he's going to go in, but that's a massive pylon wall dropped from Ball in the meantime. And does he detect? I don't know if he recognizes that this Dark Templar is doing his work here at the 12 o'clock. Also where the carriers, it looks like some more carriers being built here on site. So a Goliath here, finally some troops moving in to help deal with this Dark Templar. Vultures sneaking into the six o'clock, or sorry, the nine o'clock location. Gonna be able to take the cannons down. And now Ball, even though he's up 20 supply, is gonna be in a disastrous situation because he's got, he's lost mining at the nine o'clock. He's only mining top left. And pretty soon that is going to be breached as well. And he had a Dark Templar as something at the 12 o'clock, but otherwise doesn't have a lot going on. So the next is just being left here. And it looks like Glaive has done it with some patience and with some calculated attacks. Is going to be able to sneak in, uh, hopefully rapidly clear out those cannons. Zealot's trying to clear the minefield in between to maybe get some reinforcements out. But right now, Ball has very little resources moving in. The 12 o'clock base is now fully up and running. We've got another command center ready to go shortly. Keep in mind that mineral only is also gone. But from what I see, Glaive has, despite everything, has the units to get it done to halt mining on his opponent's side of the map. In the meantime, I don't think Ball has quite the resources to do it. Zelts sneaking out. They're going to get all it's going to take is a siege tank or two. Maybe even an EMP over the gate, uh, over the photon cannons, there's a single siege tank that should be sufficient to clear out top left. Probe's finally repositioning. It looks like they're going to try to distance mine, or maybe they're just going to move pure bottom left. <clears throat> looks like they're going to try to distance mine here at the six o'clock location. So emergency mode time for ball. I feel like I've said that a couple times now. Desperate measures. Goliath, or sorry, Dragoon moving in to try to pick off that siege tank to keep those cannons alive. For a little bit longer period of time. Looks like that siege tank is going to get wiped out. But that's only one cannon left. And should be enough vultures to just swarm it and wipe it out. Plus reinforcements of a whole lot of goliaths. To go ahead and clear it. Another nexus being dropped here bottom left. Ball looks like he's just picking up everything he has. And he wants to try to secure bottom left. Maybe if he can get mining. Yeah, starting to try to mine at the 9 o'clock location once again. As he's losing top left. Just trying to buy himself some time here and clear out everything and reestablish himself. In the meantime, three o'clock base is open for Glaive should he want to take it. The command center is actually hovering over the mineral only. Glaive a little bit hurting for resources. He's up a good amount of supply. I still think it's Glaive's game to lose right this second. He just needs to get his units in place. It's kind of been a speed versus slow macro aggression game this entire time, and it looks like Ball going to continue this. Somewhere he manages to sneak the resources to get the carriers out. Keep in mind, they rapidly got picked off earlier, and they're unfortunately running right into the Goliath's hands and in open field. So that's going to be an easy pickoff 
So one down. Two down already. So four remain. They're going to try to sneak around. One of them's already heavily damaged. The SCVs honestly should just reposition top left right this second. This is a good attack point where there's kind of the nice area to work with. An EMP potentially going to drop there, but this is also creating more distraction for Ball where maybe he can get... So bottom left is about mined out, but that natural expansion is back up. He's starting to mine again at the 9 o'clock. But Glaive also starting to get his resources in, and now the Goliaths are coming from all angles. A little bit scattered. But still looks like they're able to at least walk in and get some damage done. Top left completely peeled out. 3 o'clock base has not been claimed by anyone yet. We have some Marines waiting for the Interceptors as well. So we got... Three carriers left, very, very damaged. Big distraction right there. The Vulture was able to sneak in the six o'clock and confirm that's no longer held. But Ball has crawled back into this because he's got that nine o'clock sort of mining for him. He's got that natural expansion bottom left mining for him as well. But it's still two base Terran up and running. And it looks like decent SCVs starting to mine out in the field <clears throat> and Glaive starting to hunker down a little bit and build that supply. Supply count's actually even, which gives Theoretically, ball the advantage. These carriers are wild cards. Could shift things rapidly either direction. But if things just hold and stand the way they are, <clears throat> Glaive might be in a bit of trouble because he's not halting Ball's ability to reconstruct and start moving across the map. And I, I presume more carry yeah, more carriers are starting to field. <clears throat> so I think it is still up to Glaive to proceed forward and get some additional damage done. We've got the carriers pinned in a little bit, some Goliaths on a Goliath on the left and ball starting to clear things out so he can maybe get some support and provide a threat to Glaive's mining. It looks like the Dragoons donating themselves. A stream of vultures going bottom left. We have three cannons and three Dragoons. I don't know that that's sufficient to defend especially with a decent amount of focus fire in the midst of this. However, more carriers are taking the field. So an interesting situation where both players locked in a bit now. The carrier is just holding that position, but that's giving Ball precious time to get additional bases back up. And in the meantime, Glaive is just sticking on two bases. That 12 o'clock base is just about mined out, and he's only mining at this mineral only behind this. He does have the supply lead, however. has a supply lead, but has not yet utilized it. So let's see if he starts making this nine o'clock position is very tenuous for Ball. He does need to make some sort of stand here if Glaive starts pushing in. And the bottom left is also a bit of a defensive point. The best situation for him is that Glaive attacks bottom left and he can swing the army down and engage with carriers from both angles. If he's trying to attack heads up with that level three, level two weapon advantage, it's it'll be tough. So Glaive looks like he is gonna attack your bottom left. Siege tanks establishing, a lot of cruft in between. Just as that assimilator is coming down, I don't see any movement from the Dragoons at the 9 o'clock location here from Glaive. And more siege tanks, yeah, more siege tanks making their way up and establishing, uh, establishing positions so that now the Dragoons making their way from the opposite corner. But we'll see if this is too little too late or if this is going to be a brilliant double pronged attack. We also have some carrier groupings in the midst of this. So this is going to be the deciding battle either way. The carrier is finding a great approach over the cliffside edge. The Dragoons coming in from the north, the, Dragoon, the Dragoons from the south trying to engage as well. Some Zealots coming in from that right hand side. I don't even know where those units came from. But it looks like Glaive potentially going to lose this army. At which point does he, he won't have enough to defend a lot of his exterior position. And Ba will have hold of the natural expansion, two siege tanks remaining. However, the carrier is starting to drop to the Goliaths. The Dragoons need to get... So they're going to pick off the siege tanks. And now, Ball held. A little bit down on supply. Was able to reset, though. Let's see if he's able to rebuild off of it. All of a sudden, both players have sizable banks in the midst of this. 12 o'clock base is mined out. Glaive needs to expand top left. Additional Goliaths careening in. Ball... Just limping in the resources right this second. Some Zealot's going to push those Goliaths back. Unfortunately for, for Ball, even though he was able to swat that attack, 
It looks like he's not able to get that supply back up as rapidly as he's hoping for. And he's only got two bases accessible to him. The carrier's sweeping down. They're going to go ahead and try to pick at the SCV lines. With that 12 o'clock base gone, that is going to, with this base shut down, that means Glaive is no longer going to be mining, but he has a good bank in the midst of this. 2,000 minerals. And now that command center getting focused down as the Goliaths are marching in. Some repair on the command center, which is going to keep it alive. Goliath able to attack from the opposite side, and that might be it for this carrier armada here on the top. Never mind. Able to pick that off and scoot out. Glaive lifting that command center to plop the natural expansion if that gets established. He should be in good position to win this match. Supply counts once again even. Three more carriers making their way up that left-hand side. Try to provide some defense. Let's see if the Glaive makes his way into the 9 o'clock now. Because they don't think that's defensible for Ball. <laughs> yeah, the Goliath's marching forward. The little bit of Siege Tank support, what she's got. Yeah, I don't think Ball can hold, and that should potentially be game. The Kier is checking top left. Nothing's there. The Command Center floating to the natural expansion. And this might be the game-winning maneuver for Glaive. Couple carriers in between. Not a lot of interceptors in the midst of this. Have the interceptors been built? The Zealots trying to come in from the south. Nice multi-pronged attack to try to ward this off. Enormous. A bunch of Dragoons coming in, but they're not yet dedicating to this attack. And it looks like the carriers in the top left are also going to be able to pick off that command center and deny that natural expansion. Another carrier is dropped. The Goliaths getting it, uh, having to attack on two fronts, so they're going to get cleaned up. And it looks like Ball holds again and didn't lose any of his workers here at the 9 o'clock. Also, critically, was able to deny top left and is starting to move in with the Dragoons and the carrier from the opposite position. He now has a supply lead for the first time in, I don't know, it feels like 15, 20 minutes. This is a critical base to hold for Glaive. It is his last mining base. Some The siege tank's wiped out. The mine's getting cleared and Glaive recognizes he's not going to be able to hold it. So GG's. Great play from Ball. Some wonderful holds and some great tactical decisions to pull him through in that match. Wonderful end to the round of 32. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.